Usually, sorcery accusations and killings are reported in rural areas of Papua New Guinea where access is difficult. But within a space of three months in 2017, two women were accused of sorcery in two separate incidents in the heart of Lay City. When police arrived on the banks of the Bumbu River, the woman accused had been stripped, beaten and placed on a makeshift pedestal ready to be further tortured and burned. Police got there just in time. The woman was rescued and her accusers were arrested. But several days later, another woman in her 50s was murdered at Banana Block. Her body dumped up river from where police rescued the other woman. She had been killed by people she knew her neighbors and friends of her family and children. Her son, who had just left for the Southern Highlands the previous day, was called to return. Her killers made no secret of the fact that they had a hand in killing his mother because of an allegation that she practiced sorcery. <laughs> They dragged the accusing of being a sorcerer who killed their own son. They came across the road where there were people doing their market, but they didn't help her. While coming down, they hit her, kicked her, punched her, and they also used bush knives to hit her. In the last 15 years, Papua New Guineans have witnessed the most horrendous of crimes committed against women. <laughs> Social media has brought to light what used to be kept in the confines of village communities. In 2015, sorcery killings and accusations drew international condemnation when a 20-year-old woman was killed in Mount Hagen by a mob after she was accused of bewitching a child. Kepari Lenyata was killed in the most brutal fashion, beaten, tortured and then burned under a pile of tires in Mount Hagen. She became the face of an already existing movement of people working to highlight the problem. Because this belief is not, uh, you know, really creating a kind of harmony in the communities and within the families, but also creating a lot of disruption. Uh, people were forced out of the communities and, and, and uh, a lot of them were killed in, uh, you know, horrific circumstances, you know, being burned and being buried and being, you know, uh, thrown into rivers and pit toilets and you know uh, it was unimaginable and, and so uh, that churches became so concerned. They lit a very big fire, stripped off all her clothes, she was naked on the ground and they parted her legs, they tied her legs to, to the post. While there has been a lot of discussion and demands to end the violence, the problems is a lot more complex than many outside of Papua New Guinea tend to make it to be. In cultures steep with superstition, sorcery is accepted as part of human existence. It is difficult to kill ideas and beliefs that people gravitate towards in the absence of rational thinking. And every time someone dies of sorcery, the church is totally silent. Last they week, Divine Word University hosted a virtual conference bringing together frontliners, researchers and law enforcers to discuss a way forward. What was highlighted, that many frontliners, those who rescue sorcery accusation victims, worked with very limited resources and got very little help in terms of support. One of the things that we've been doing at Tribal um, is trying to make this everyone's business. It seems to be falling on few people that are always in the front line. Um, and we're seeing that when it falls on few people, it becomes really hard, especially to sustain the work. Um, it becomes really hard when the few money that you have, if it's only for, say, for, for example, with tribal, if it's only for um, creating awareness or advocacy, like our Senisim Passing program, the, in the course of running our advocacy, we were coming across people that were being tortured, people that were being um, uh, killed. And so then we had to do rescues and partner with um, people like Voice for Change or um, Oxfam, Puswa and send our, 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 the, the clients that we, we rescue, we send them through. But then in order for us to report back, we realized that um, we were not actually tasked with the money to do those rescues. It was only for advocacy. Now, in, and, and 
it, when it came to that, it, it became a challenge for us. Among you know? those who participated were Ruth Kissam and Anton Lutz, who over six years have tried to expand the network of support to sorcery accusation victims in the Highlands. I've taken four tortured women and one tortured child in my vehicle to the hospital. Uh, but often my work is more in terms of enabling other people to go and do the work. Um, so sending people phone credits, contacting the police for them, um, liaising with the human rights defenders in Nanga province as they move people to a to, uh, hospital and back to villages and all that kind of thing. Um, sometimes it's merely providing encouragement. So it's quite a uh, large area that needs uh, work and with without adequate resources from uh, the state actors um, it's very difficult for those of us who are on the ground to make sure that we're providing the best care possible for the citizens of Papua New Guinea who have um, been subjected to this illegal violence. Getting help from authorities has not been an easy task. A growing number of organizations have found that they have to rescue sorcery accusation victims out of the hotspots themselves without backup of police or any government authority.